Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Rupan the Third, part four, episode number nine and ten reaction. Okay, the previous episode, um, uh, episode number seven, it was uh, we meet the guy again, uh, Nix. I think that was his name, uh, the one guy from the M uh, MI six, and his daughter gets involved in a big problem. You know, like, and everyone gets involved in, in in the story. Like Rebecca gets involved, Rupan gets involved, you know, and obviously Nix is also gets involved. And it was the first time we actually see all of them at the same place. And uh, his daughter and his like, you know, was kidnapped, and somehow or the other, his daughter uh, got involved. Like you know, like Rupan, the 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 car that the <laughs> Rupan was supposed to steal ended up being the kidnapper's car while Rebecca's pouch makeup pouch was with the girl and since all of that this these things happened at the same time in a weird coincidence everyone came in the same place and um, we get to see how Nix is very uh, obviously very protective of his family and in the end like uh, you know he gives a warning that oh like if you try to uh, involve my family in this I want to uh, let you go and we also see how there's like something wrong with him you know like he kind of goes crazy a little bit and we see how the boss his boss uh, actually made sure that if something goes wrong people shoot him they were uh, actually like you know hired assassins ready to shoot him as if something went wrong i guess it did not happen nothing like that's what happened so thank god for now but yeah now and that was that and then there was that whole thing with the uh, i think what was it called the dream of italy yeah i think that was what it was called which i'm not sure what it is still but it's something and it's, it's been hinted that it's like it will play a major role in this whole thing and like you know, there's something that the mi6 is hiding from everyone okay that was that episode the next one episode eight we get uh to a haunted house not a haunted house sorry a hotel haunted hotel where we actually meet a ghost and uh, in the beginning like uh, we i'm like at least i was sure that that was not a ghost i'm pretty sure rupan was also sure but by the end of it we realized that oh this this little girl is actually a ghost while the owner of the hotel is tricking others thinking making them feel that this is a haunted place while not knowing that an actual ghost act actually resides there and we get involved with the what was the name the mafia the mama maf something like that the mama group or something I forgot the name <laughs> and uh, you know they try to uh, get the treasure but obviously rupan is able to uh shake them off and in the end we get to see and rupan's like you know the, the place where everything is and rupan tells the girl that it's okay now you know everything's fine i've got this and that's how she was able to pass on so yeah anyway let's get started this is episode number nine yeah so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it whichever is your preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one go all right okay let's see what happens today mm -hmm. All right. South of France, problem. Yeah. Oh my God! What? Oh whoa! What the? Yo, what is this? Look, looks like a detective call an episode. Starts with the murder, you know. <laughs> wait, is that no? Oh wait. Move! Damn! The sniper got sniped! Whoa, what's happening here? Okay! Wait, is this Jigen? No! Oh my god, no, I don't think this is Jigen. Jigen doesn't. Oh, 
poem on what belladonna isn't that like a name of a poisonous herb or something yeah oh th those are the names of these people Oh. Zora. Who are these characters? Suddenly. Is this something to do with Goldman's past or something? Or maybe not. It's been a while we've seen him, Goemon, you know. <laughs> we just saw him in the first episode and then he suddenly just was not there. <laughs> and now he's back. Hmm. All right, let's see. Requiem for the assassins. Right. Whoa. Oh. Wait, are these all assassins? Romeo the bomber. These are all assassins. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay, yeah, who's this? Oh! Whoa, okay. Oh, that guy. Dickel Samuel Who's that? President of Oh Oh All this was Oh that guy Oh, is this Zora? There you go. The one that uh, going on. So this is. I'm guessing this is like the past. Yeah, this is a recollection of before, like, we saw what happened, now they're recollecting it, okay. So they were hired to kill Zora, and they tried to do it, but Zora started killing them off one by one. Okay, okay. What the what is happening? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? She's wearing a
Yeah, all right. Hmm. Uh. Oh my god, there's a lot of explosive in here. It's me out like you know like the whole thing will place will blow up up or something. Someone shoots in the explosives. Okay! Yeah! Move! Oh my god. Yo, going on is just Is he moving from one? Uh, yeah, he's moving. I was like, how is he able to change position so quickly? Damn. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Whoa, he curved the bullet because of obviously because of wait, what? She dodged it? Oh no. Oh, oh god. Yep, there you go, going on. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Imagine fighting a person who can slice bullets in half. Like, <laughs> how? Oh, okay, this will be a problem. This will be a problem. Um, but yeah, I guess that's going on, so maybe not. Whoa! Wait, who? Who shot him? Oh, okay. <laughs> He's like some sort of video game character, going on. <laughs> Oh, did he get him? No, no, he did. Oh, my God. Damn. Wait, so mission accomplished. Oh. Ah. Oh my god, so... So he did not die here. That's why they said that he's saying... Oh, she... she okay, it's a long time have passed after that. I, we can see that she's grown up. Okay, that's it. Wait, so all of these happened when Goemon was not with Rupan, I'm guessing. Before he met Rupan. Ah, uh, well. Oh, he's here. Hmm. Oh my god, you don't oh. 
just casually just Okay, so yeah, she, she did get her hand shot, you know. Oh, here we are. Uh, is he even here now? Wait, what the? That doesn't look like Zor. No. Wait, so who has been shooting? It's someone else who's shooting. Oh my god. It's someone else. I think so. Ooh. Who is this guy? No, wait. Oh my god. I did not realize. Oh my god. Hmm. Oh my god. Uh mm. Oh boy. Oh, oh my God. Wait. Oh God. Yo. Is that going on? Yep, that's going on. Oh my god. <laughs> the mask and everything. Ah. Great, another... Ah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, bullets are nothing for going on, you know. 
<laughs> How can he? <laughs> oh my god. Well, the person who can cut a plane in half. Obviously. Well, obviously, he has taken her hostage. That's pretty apparent now. So, how is going on? Oh. Yo! Minigun! He just deflected. You think a revolver will do something to him? He deflected all the bullets of a minigun. Is that true? Oh, it is true. Oh my god. Well, we could just cut the cut the tablet off. Well, obviously, you're you're stupid. She has a gun on it in her hand. Oh my god! Uh. How do we... Oh wait, is he going to... Oh, he can stab her and... Like, he's a, he's a samurai. He took it out, there you go. There you go, she's alive. So he attacked in such a way that the vitals miss, I am guessing. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> hmm. Well, oh my god. Ah, Zenkata. <laughs> yeah. Well, Zenkata, that's why. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> the air force in itself was so strong that it uh damn okay this was a very good episode i i liked you know like the whole like I, I like the way they're doing this uh sometimes like, you know like we usually get the whole all the characters at the same place episodes which is definitely good but i like the way they kind of sometimes mix in these solo episodes with one character you know like we had the um jigen episode you know like um goemon episode we got the zenigata episode so we also had the fujiko episode yeah so yeah like it's it's, it's quite entertaining like this as well the usual episodes are good but this is also really good <clears throat> mm. 
and there you go all right so this was this was a um going on centric episode and we begin the episode with few of the assassins getting killed you know, like the all the assassins that we saw later on um all of them getting killed one by one and uh, we see that someone is you know actively hunting them down a sniper most probably and uh, we get to meet this girl belladonna and uh, we, yeah, Goemon comes in and Goemon is like, what was the name of the guy? Just a sec. Uh, Zora, Zora. Yeah, I think that was the name. Yeah, Zora. So Goemon says that Zora is back. Now here I, I thought maybe this like has something to do with Goemon's past or something. But we did get the actual answer as to who Zora is and was, uh, you know, Goemon's relationship with Zora, Belladonna, all these characters. And... Uh, we get the little um, flashback or recollection. So the recollection shows us there, like you know, like, there was a time when Goemon went to like the um, like a like like a place where all assassins were called. There was multiple people here, multiple good assassins. Uh, so alongside um, that girl Belladonna as well. Belladonna was quite young at that time. Yeah, she she was just a kid and Goemon and everyone was just there and we meet this guy his name is Leopoldo Paco and he is supposed to be the like you know like in the future he was supposed to become the president and he like the way he started the whole meeting by saying like oh we have to assassinate what's the name of the guy um the President of the Republic of Dahlia, Decal or Decal, yeah. We like you know he said that we need to assassinate them because him. Okay, where is it? Though it's a small West African nation, he is said to be the one of the most evil dictators in the world. Now, the way he started this meeting and everything, I was like, oh, okay, so. We need to, you know, like kill, assassinate that person, and because as as he says, like and that person is very bad, an evil doer, whatever. Now, by the end of this episode, I'm wondering if what he said was true or not. Did he just like it was pretty apparent, as like you know, Biladon also says that um, Fugo used you know all of them in order to take out this guy, so that he himself can get his hands on the nation and uh, so that's why he did that so i'm wondering here now like what he said about this guy decal was that true then or was that actually wrong maybe he was a nice person a nice leader and he just got him like you know like out of the picture so that he could get his hands on the nation so like i'm, I'm wondering about that but I, I don't know like you know probably both of them were bad you know like i'm guessing that was the Whole situation here this guy the president and this guy Fugo or, no Fugo was that his, I, I just read his name I forgot it what the hell is wrong with me <laughs> Fa I think Fago no wait Fago yeah Fago. <laughs> so yeah um so Decal or Fago like you know like Decal uh, Fago is obviously bad here but you know like since he targeted Decal there comes a question if decal was really that bad or not like my like you know how i think of it is both of them were probably bad both maybe decal was also not that good and he just wanted to take him out just to get you know his hand on the nation and it did not you know he he it did not take him out because he was bad or something so like something like that i don't know but either way um he just wanted him out of the picture so he hired all of these assassins and told them how like you know that person is very bad he's doing so many bad things we're doing this for humanity or whatever all these you know moralistic like you know sweet talk or whatever you call them he just he just told them and said that 
yeah we need to take him out so obviously otherwise like you know like a lot of people here will not do the job for example goemon is one of the prime examples like if goemon realized that he's just hiring them for doing their dirty jobs he would not be here i'm, I'm pretty sure he would have left just like goemon i'm pretty sure there was in in this room there were multiple people who probably had the same point of view as goemon who would have probably just left if they realized that this guy fargo is just using them to like you know for his own evil deeds so that's why he made this type of a like you know statement like oh that person bad he's going to be the threat to uh like you know, our world get him out that type of a thing and he talks about how zora is the one of the best shooters and he is like you know like his bodyguard now <clears throat> we begin the episode uh, uh sorry uh, we begin the next part with um everyone just trying to find out zora like in all the like you know just huge group of assassins just going and uh, like you know like trying to track him down and uh, we get to see um goemon and belladonna and, like goemon just you know killed like a scorpion and we see how belladonna has like what do you call them those vests of like you know filled with bombs so suicide vests or whatever and he was ready with the uh, uh what was it called the ah uh, the ah uh, god damn the thing the buzzer or whatever that push i forgot the name <laughs> uh, anyway um anyways uh yeah she was ready with that thing to just blow herself out if something happens and she needs to do it so i should have realized at that moment that something is probably wrong with her otherwise why would she take such a drastic measure like there's multiple assassins here who even you know decides to blow themselves up for killing someone no one assassination is like you know like you kill the other person like unless and until it's like very like you know like life and death or something very drastic you don't use these type of missions of self-destructive way of doing stuff so it, it i should have it should have actually struck me at that moment that the way like you know since she's doing it like this something is probably going on in like you know in her background like you know she's probably being just used by someone or something but it did not like you know i i wasn't able to realize that unfortunately i just thought that's how he did his, her job but it, now that I'm thinking about it, the way she kind of said like, oh, like, you know, I'll, I'll just use this if needs be. That was kind of really weird at that moment. Like, I should have realized. Either way, um, uh, Goemon was like, no, you don't have to do that. You know, like, I'm going to help you out and protect you. And he, like, you know, like the, the pinky promise, he did that. And yeah, now here, then we can see everyone's just ready to get Zora and uh zora starts taking them out one by one only the people who were like in the um what was that the 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 little like you know depression things you know they were kind of hiding there like uh the the lady the lady the the blonde lady um the the, the old guy you know the white-haired guy you know and the other guy like all of them were there they were the only one who was who were safe by the end of it as we see you know like since there's a recollection later on as we see what happened to them like the lady was just having a nice vacation she just got shot and the the white-haired man also got shot the other guy so those were the only survivors of this expedition who later on got killed off as well but yeah so <clears throat> they were there um they were the only one who survived and zora took each and every one of the others who were outside in the open out one by one and i was like what the hell is happening how can zora move so fast look at him just moving from one place to another just changing like you know just positions i'm like damn and then i saw that he's in a car and i'm like okay so that's why <laughs> uh, like it's interesting i like i've, I've heard that uh, one of the most important things that sniper needs to uh, keep in mind is as soon as they shoot one shot they need to move and change position you know like especially if it's like a stealth mission or whatever as soon as you shoot some like you know a shot never stay in the same place constantly move like you know from one place to another change your position otherwise if someone gets you you're like you know like it, it'll be bad so 
I heard that, and Zora was doing that so well, like, because obviously he was in a car, <laughs> the car was continuously moving. So, yeah, either way, um, Bella, we can see, we see Belladonna just, like, you know, just rushing out, jumping, and, like, just, I don't know how she did that, just wielding the sniper rifle like it's some kind of a <laughs> light toy, <laughs> just jumping and shooting, like, <laughs> like some video game maneuvers she was doing. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy um either way she like there's like a certain section where she just dodged one bullet i'm like wow <laughs> and uh, yeah so what happens is she misses one bullet and it was always going to get her obviously goemon is there and we know goemon like you know like nothing can stop him not even bullets so he just comes in and helps, you know, cuts the bullet off and tells Belladonna that, yeah, I told you, I'll, I'll take care of this. And then we get to see that um, Decal, you know, he and his, like, you know, army is here and they're like, oh, help, help Zora. And they're fighting and, uh, like, you know, shooting them. And obviously Goemon is here, Goemon, nothing can stop Goemon. He just casually just deflects all the bullets. <laughs> Bullets from machine gun, he just deflects them. <laughs> oh god. And and yeah, in the end, he comes in, cuts the cal and the thing in half, while on the other hand, Belladonna shoots um, Zora, you know, and Zora gets injured. By the end, we see how Zora was still, like, you know, like, not dead, and he shot the last shot towards Goemon, which what's her name uh, belladonna came and saved him now the implication of this scene actually hits me later on after i realized what belladonna was going through because here we can see like uh belladonna actually tried to save goemon by even sacrificing her one hand the, the hand that she uses for like you know shooting and everything which shows me like you know, shows us how you know, like she prioritized Goemon's safety over her orders. I'm pretty sure, um, uh, uh, Fago, yeah, Fago, that was his name. I'm pretty sure Fago gave her the orders of, you know, using everybody and just taking out, um, the kill however possible. So she probably did not listen to at that moment she decided to put goemon's life in priority over that order i'm guessing and which makes me realize that ah this this seems like you know what can i say like this, this seems importance at that moment when i was watching this i did not know what was happening now that i know what was happening it, it hits me that oh my god so yeah now later on that that that's, that was like the scene the whole place blows up like you know, they throw a grenade and uh, yeah dead um uh, zora is supposed to be dead everyone's dead and now fast forward to the present fago has become is almost going to become the president and uh, there you go and then goemon says we assassinated the Tekel so that he could get the rights uh, to oil in dahlia so there you go so that was that that was the whole plan of uh, Fago. Now, <clears throat> it's interesting to see, now that I'm watching this, like how the whole assassination was taken care of. Um, first of the first thing that um, uh, Belladonna does is she like, you know, kind of points in the wrong direction and shows that, oh, if I was Zora, I would have like, you know, shot from there. Goemon goes there. And she takes a different building, you know, just so that she does not have to confront Goemon. And we can see how she just was, like, you know, like, like Goemon was beside him, her. She could have just killed him any time. And we can see how she decided to keep him for the last because he did not want to kill him. And, uh, you know, like, and then he, like, you know, she shoots the other person from there. And... Uh, you know, like rushes back to the, the guy, the what was his name? The guy who was shot in the middle of the city, you know? 
we can see that he's like not just bloody just over there belladonna is already there present and the picture is in the in, in his in her pocket uh, in his pocket sorry so most probably belladonna herself planted the evidence there the picture there just so that she could lure out going on to that place you know to that abandoned place because she wanted to deal with going on over there and um, you know like he she just casually took out the picture and she's like oh this is the hideout and uh, yeah so obviously that was i'm i'm pretty sure i'm, I'm like 90 percent sure the uh, picture was planted on the guy by belladonna now they are like you know in the train and uh Goemon asks if she can shoot and she's like i can but it still is a problem and you know like when Goemon says how like you know like we did a pinky promise so yeah i'm, I'm going to you know like protect you and uh, later on they go to that house they are ready with the sniper rifles Goemon gets in and he sees Zora here now was that Zora or was that someone else I have no idea Who, who was, am I missing something? Let me know. Who was this guy? Like, we see, like, you know, just before Goemon saw his face, we see there was like a little flashback where Goemon realized who the assassin was, you know, blonde hair, mask, and he realized that it was actually Belladonna. And then we see the old man who was in the wheelchair. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's Zora. Yeah. You know why? Because uh, there's like burn marks. Yeah, that's Zora. So yeah, no wait. So I was I was going to say that uh, Belladonna planted the evidence, uh, like you know the the picture over in in the pocket. I'm pretty sure Belladonna did that. You know he. No 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 no. You know what? Maybe not. Mm, I'm wrong. I think. Bell Belladonna did not plant the evidence or the picture in the that that guy. The guy who was killed. You know in the town she probably you know he didn't know that belladonna was the one killing off the people so what he did was he just tracked down zora that's all he did and he probably was just here you know like he probably snapped a picture came here and was just waiting to meet goemon and belladonna to tell them that oh like you know i found out his hideout and i i know that the guy is crippled you know he cannot shoot and I don't think he's the one who's killing people off. He was probably here just to say that, to inform that to Bell uh, Belladonna and Goemon. Obviously, he did not know that Belladonna was the one who was killing them off. So he was just waiting there and Belladonna shot him, went there and took the picture out and told Goemon like, oh, this is probably the place. So yeah, that's, I'm guessing that's how it went. Like it's, it was not Belladonna who planted the picture in his pocket because it wouldn't make sense otherwise, like, you know? Zora being here wouldn't make sense actually. Either way, like you know, uh, like you know, he Belladonna also got Zora because I'm pretty sure um, Fago also told her to take care of Zora as well in case he becomes a like you know, threat in the future. And uh, uh, you know, and Goemon says like, okay, so you killed all the assassin and laid the blame on Zora because you know, like Fago told you to. No, wait. That would be the end. No. Where is it? Okay, yeah. If the truth of Dekel's assassination were to come out, that would be the end of his political career. There you go. That's why Fago was like, yeah, kill off the, all the assassins. And uh, he gets to know how this is all Fago's ideas. He tells Belladonna how Fago is just using her, but she's like, Nah, she he took care like you know he took me in he gave me food he like you know trained me all that like you know like I can you know I'm I'm forever grateful for him. But Goemon was like, so why are you crying then? And he just she just whacks him in the head, and obviously he's she's not able to kill him. He's she's like yeah don't come near us like again. And uh, later on we get to see like you know Fago is there and. Um, 
you know, Goemon is on his way with the mask. Uh, what was what are those masks called? I think those are. No, Neoma? Is that what they're called? Let me check. I think they're called Neo Mask or something. Yeah, yeah, Neo Mask. There you go. Neo, N I O H. You know the one where there's like a demon laughing, not a demon, but like a like a person laughing with two huge horns. That thing. Okay. Either way, um. He's here with that mask, like, and there's like <laughs> sunset behind him in the background. <laughs> He's like wearing a, a shawl or a scarf and just coming in. And uh, yeah, now I was wondering why is like you know Belladonna actually listening to Fago? You know, like I it didn't really really make sense why she was like kind of following all his orders. Which we, we realized in the end because he had like a miniature bomb in her heart. That was basically the reason why she was just doing whatever she, he was telling them to. Now, Goemon comes in and obviously like there's a lot of people just shooting at him. But this is Goemon. He's just slashing off every, all the bullets. And there's this dude with the minigun. Even the minigun fails in front of Goemon's sword. And we are on top of the roof. And here we get to see Fago is like, Aha, I have this phone in my hand which has the um, signal to the bomb that's in Belladonna's heart. So, yeah, you better not, like, you know, do anything and just die. Otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll put, like, you know, I'll, I'll detonate this. And he's just, like, you know, like, just laughing and he's like ha 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 like i mean you know like you cannot do anything like <laughs> like it, it must have been so what can i say um he he, he never expected belladon actually killing him probably because he thought that you know like what can i say like you know like this is well, this is actually a thing i've seen i think like what anime i don't remember but like a similar situation like this in another anime where a person was like knew that she was being mistreated by someone and she was he she was being blackmailed by someone and like a similar situation was like this was happening and uh, again like the other person had some kind of a, um like you know some kind of a advantage over her that's what she he was using to blackmail her and it was like a similar situation like this and even in one of the most like you know like like he was even in when he was like in one of the most vulnerable positions where she could have easily killed him you know she did not because for her you know like this was the way of life all she knew was being abused from you know when she was younger and being just manipulated and just given orders to her you know that's how she knew her life so the fact that oh i could just kill him and everything will be fine didn't didn't even come to her mind and she did nothing at that moment you know like even when he could have she could have easily gotten out of this that position like all she knew was that person from the childhood and every, like you know, she depended on him from the beginning to the end, even though she was being mistreated. So the fact that oh, I can get out of this by just killing him didn't even come to her mind. And even if it came, she didn't even like you know decide to go on with that. That's how much of a big like, an impact that person had on her. So I was wondering, probably that sort of thing could have happened here. Thankfully, that did not happen here because probably because Goemon was here. You know, like as soon as she got someone else to depend on, you could say, as Goemon said, like you know the whole pinky promise thing. You know, as soon as he got someone, she, she realized that yeah, why am I in this position? I could just shoot this guy right now, here and now, and uh, you know, like and and she probably. Also, like, you know, decide as we saw after that, she decided to kill herself as well. 
that's why he she just shot him in the head and the guy was so what can i say like you know so sure that she's not going to defy him that he didn't even realize that ah that gun that's pointing towards goemon any second it could point at me <laughs> so yeah now <clears throat> he just got shot just like that and you know he just she just punched pushed the button as well to for that thing to detonate and she says that my hands are too dirty i cannot keep living like this and uh, you know to atone for my sins i'm doing this and uh, the countdown is coming down like you know little by little and she's like nothing you can do about it now but this is going on so i'm pretty sure he probably just i don't know how he did that like the thing was in her heart wasn't it so unless and until you pierce her heart how is it even possible to take the thing out i'm not sure but somehow goemon was able to do it like if it was not in the heart if it was like in somewhere else i would have realized like oh she he just like you know just missed his her vital points on purpose and that's why she was able to survive but the thing the bomb was in her heart so how how is that possible <laughs> I have no idea, but either way, like you know, he, you know, like got the bomb off, destroyed, like you know, it just blew up out outside, and they did not show us at the beginning that, uh, not beginning, so after that, that what happened, you know, there's like a little mystery thing going on. Just a sec. Yeah, there's a little mystery thing going on as to oh is she alive is she not but then you know like the the the, the, the news that was like you know, the reporter just says that oh like you know like two person are being followed a samurai and a woman with a severe chest injury and there we go that's where we know that ah, she's alive <laughs> and here we see just going on with his usual crew just sitting down <laughs> Group one is trying to find out, like you know, what, like what, what the place they are in, and which, well, like you know, trying to figure out the map. They meet a little kid who talks about how you should not do something wrong, you know, and talks about how pinky promises are, you know, important. And she says, like, I just pinky promise with this rude lady. And here we see, like, Goemon was kind of intrigued, like, and he tried to get up, probably to ask him more about Belladonna. <laughs> Jigen is like, yeah, stop. No. Like, you cannot know, like let her live her life. We like if she gets involved with us, you know, it'll be more trouble. And this is the thing, you know, like like all the characters that Rupan, Goemon and Jigen met and meets, you know, they ultimately they have to leave them because unless and until they are also in the similar type of profession that they are in. Like, you know, if the, like for example in, in Jigen's case you, you saw that that episode where he meets the the doctor lady you know that episode you know in the end he he had to get go away you know because as soon as they are going to involve these characters in their life it will be over their life would become completely just destroyed so the the position that rupan jingen and goemon are in you know like they cannot involve anyone they can just help people out and get out of their life like you know slowly just so that they don't trouble them with their problems so yeah like anytime anytime like you know going on jigen or lupan they can they, it could be an assassination attempt on them so if these characters are involved in their life that is also going to affect them as well so yeah that's the sad part of you know like the whole thing like any people they interact with or they get attached to they will have to leave them sometime soon otherwise yeah either way um <laughs> later on we get to see zenigata just chasing them it's like <laughs> it's like stop rupan i've got you and rupan gets in the car tries to get away and in the end we see goemon just using his samurai sword slash the air current or whatever he uses that to stop the car and <laughs> the kid was like wow a samurai <laughs> that's so cool and that's where it ends so yeah all right let's start with the next one this is episode 10 so yeah i'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here think it whichever is your preference 
and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one go <clears throat> What the? What? <laughs> oh, she she called him. Wait, what? Damn. What? <laughs> wow. Uh. <laughs> Invitation. Wine exploration. Oh my god. Oh no. All right, what? <laughs> Wait, is this going to be one of those episodes where <laughs> he actually is like, all right, and makes a promise with both of them and oh my God, that'll be. <laughs> oh God. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder <laughs> this time which, which, what Fujiko is going to rob, you know, like I'm pretty sure that's what she, she's planning. She's probably planning to steal something from there. So that's why. <laughs> and I'm, I'm guessing it's pretty something similar for Rebecca as well. She wants like some kind of a, like excitement and adrenaline rush or something. So. I don't know, we'll see. Hmm. The lovesick pig. <laughs> wow, okay, this title seems. Count McCullman. Auction party. Hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Two invitations. <laughs> Exactly, like how? What? Oh no, he's going to try to, oh my god. Oh no. Yep, Rupan is gone. It's... Wow, this is really happening. What? <laughs> oh my. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ah! 
<laughs> he'll be like, oh, I, I just went out somewhere else to get this flower. <laughs> oh, wow. Ah, uh, there you go, as I said. <laughs> let, me, let me just go and get it. Oh my god, this is going to go so wrong. I'm pretty sure Rebecca and Fujiko are going to, like, you know, bump to each other. <laughs> Didn't she say white? Uh, let me just go and get it again. Oh no, here we go. Uh. Uh. <laughs> oh my god, who is this? Uh, yeah. Uh. Oh my god, what is happening now? Okay. Understood this one. Oh, okay. Lost track pig. Wait, what? <laughs> hmm. So both, yeah, Fujika and her both are targeting the. Yeah. Depends on the wife with the brother. Oh. Wow. Barrel. Okay. <laughs> in the world so no she probably wants it for the money there you go well obviously this is Fujiko what else do you think she <laughs> well I don't think so She's probably here for the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, well... No, she's not here for the money. I, I wonder what... I wonder what she, why she's here then. Oh my god, that's why she's here. Wow. Oh god. Hmm. Ah! Well, obviously. <laughs> uh. Well. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> oh. 
Well, obviously, what <laughs> what else did you think? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> this guy is like. <laughs> Wow. Oh, this is just. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like. God. Oh no! Okay. All right. What happened to Rebecca? Didn't the slur? Okay, there you go. Damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, he she just great. Wait, doesn't that take out of the thrill? Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh no. Is this it? Oh no, I feel like there's like some kind of a trap. Oh my god. Wait, what? Oh, this, this is really happening. Yeah, so wait. This is an actual... Oh my god. So this guy is... No. Hmm. Wait, yeah. Oh my god. Um <laughs> Wow <laughs> Yo wait what how did he Okay this is Well <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why was he not affected? Oh, Rupan did not drink, I think, yeah. Yeah, Rupan didn't drink. <laughs> Her, okay. Why did she... Yeah, okay, well. <laughs> Yo Ah <laughs> Okay
Oh my god. <laughs> Where's Fujiko? Oh, there you go. That's <laughs> just shooting the tires. Oh my god, I... Is it, are they sober now? I think they're sober. Yeah, they're sober now. No, wait, they're not. Oh my god. Hmm. Oh, damn. Oh, yo. <laughs> okay, you better take the gun. F yeah, the gun is with that guy. Oh my god. The gun. Okay, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Why? Is, is he like the... Is it like somehow related to that guy? The one who made this? Ah, that's true. It, it was his from the beginning. He's the... No, no, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, no. Her. Her. Get it back. Oh, there you go. I was right. That's him. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was her, wasn't it? Okay. Ah. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah, they also. <laughs> Yeah. Think about that. Oh. Wait, what? Oh my god. Wait. Wait, he dropped. Yeah, what? What? I thought he did not drink.
Wait, so this guy, he... Are they still drunk? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I think I think I need to go back to that part. I still am not completely clear about what happened. Wait, so what was that inside the bioengineering? I need to go back to that part. I still am not completely clear as to what happened in the end. So, like, it's pretty apparent that there was someone in the... Inside the... That's why she, he said her, you know? Like... Said it. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to that part again. I I'm still not clear. Okay, this wine has the love potion mixed in it. Okay. That this part I understand. Like you know her wife was in bio like you know engineering. That's why she used to put in some kind of a potion into the wine and used to feed the people, and that's how like they used to advertise the whole thing of Oh, you drink this one and they'll obviously fall in love. And um, that's why it worked so well with it because it had like a concoction, some kind of a chemical in it. The wife said something like, I'm not going to do it. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> it makes you feel like you're in love with whoever's in front of you, your eyes, when you first drink the wine, right? That's why everyone's in love with me because those, all of them looked at him. Okay, what's the secret behind the barrel then? Okay, Fujiko said you haven't figured it out. Here we go. Think about why his wife disappeared. And why they went bankrupt because they couldn't produce any more wine. Also, how the count collected his wine. He kept his collection without drinking any of it. He kept his collection with... Uh, okay. Okay, Rebecca goes and smashes the barrel. The barrel bursts, the wine comes out. And... Yeah, there's someone in it. Okay, the guy falls down. If this ever got out to the world, that would be the end of your life. <clears throat> Mimi, forgive me. They, I'm, I'm pretty sure they kept this part so vague because uh, obviously like, this is very dark, this whole section. That's why they did not properly address the situation. I'm still not clear. So wait a minute. So. Like kept his wife in there. Like what? You know what? I'm going to check the. If I have like any explanation for this episode. Episode number 10, isn't it? 
um, because I'm very curious about this part. <clears throat> like, okay, let me go to the wiki page and let's see if there's like an actual explanation. The girls stop him and then go to a debate over Lupin. Lupin arrives having figured out the man is Guido Cesario, Cesario, the creator of the wine, whose missing wife has concocted the love potion in the wine. Lupin, Lupin special, speculates that the wife disappeared because she didn't want to do this anymore and that Guido had one purpose in getting this one wine casket back. Rebecca breaks open the barrel and the body of Guido's wife is inside. Mystery solved the girl. What the hell? This doesn't explain anything. Why was the wife in the barrel? I don't understand that. Like, I understand that... Uh... Oh. Okay, I think I can probably... Correct me if I'm wrong. So, I'm guessing what actually happened here is that... Um... Guido, you know, like he, like, you know, as as they say, like, you know, like her, his wife did not want to do the whole love potion thing anymore. She actually said that no, I'm not going to do it. Did Guido kill her after that? Because she decided not to do it, and later on realized what he has done, and to hide the body, he put the body in the wine barrel. Is that what happened? And then later on, as the whole bankruptcy and everything happened, and like you know, I'm guessing the like, you know, the the auction people got their hands on the everything, and Guido was like, "Oh, the barrel has my wife's body in it. I need to get that back as soon as possible. Otherwise, the police will realize what it is, and they'll get involved. And I'm my like you know, like I'm I'm going to be, you know, like like you know, they're going to understand what I did." I'm guessing that's what happened. Like this is just a guess because otherwise it doesn't explain it why the wife's body was in the barrel because you know like they like and they're very like you know doing this so subtly you know like as as they said like, you know she, the wife went missing they're not actually telling that what happened by the wife went missing I'm understanding it implies that. He killed her because he did not want she did not want to do it anymore and after killing her he put the body in the barrel i think that's what happened i might be wrong though you know please correct me if i am actually wrong with this but i think that's what probably happened because as rupan says like you know, if this comes out into the world you know like yeah like the, the police is going to get you <laughs> all right enough about that we begin this episode with uh, Rupan being invited both by Rebecca and Fujiko you know about uh, going to this wine auction you know this um, invitation they gave given uh, wine exploration San Marino in commemoration of Count McCalman and uh, yeah so <laughs> going on is like all right so i understand like you know what is happening here both of you invite you to this thing so who are you going to go there with now as going on says that it's kind of impossible to go there with both of them because it's the same day same place this is going to be very difficult and it, the thought did cross my mind that rupan is actually going to try to go with both of them and we're going to do the whole that thing you know where he's going to go with one person and just say that oh i'm going to leave for a little bit go to the other person and then like you know bring up with some excuse and say like oh i'm going to leave a few moments after spending time with fujiko he's going to go back to rebecca again and it's going to just do this like <laughs> damn like i remember uh, like you know like uh like uh, this type of setting in multiple animes like you know characters try to do this and they fail spectacularly i really was not expecting rupan to try to pull that off but he tried to do that 
and uh, like obviously the here like you know like all those animes where the girls never realize what's happening this is actually like you know rupan the third and i'm pretty sure like you know both rebecca and fujiko realized what was happening after like in the first two times rupan just left like that so <laughs> we go in to the venue and rupan is there with rebecca first and um, rupan is like all right um I'm, I'm just going to go a little bit leaves and goes to fujiko <laughs> and now you know what i actually see it now you know the section like in the portion when they drunk the wine first of all the butler comes in gives them the wine well, i'm talking about rebecca and uh, rupan first rebecca drinks the wine looks at rupan first then looks at someone else so as soon as that's happened the, the the love potion started working i'm guessing while for fujiko you know after rupan leaves and goes to fujiko grabs the wine again from one of the butlers gives it to fujiko fujiko drinks the wine looks at rupan there you go that explains like because i was thinking like in the cellar fujiko and rebecca was together i was actually thinking both of them to actually start liking each other because of that but no they drank the wine a lot earlier and the first person that they saw both of them saw were rupan so the 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 effect worked started working a lot later it took it took a while for the effect to start working again so yeah now and then again we here we see like rupan is talking about how uh, oh everyone's so jealous because i'm with you look at all those like you know people and this like four of those uh, like you know people just men just standing there looking at rupan are like ah look at this guy how can this guy get like a you know, girl like this and while drinking the wine <laughs> so all of them look at rupan at the same time and obviously the love potion starts working and uh, we can see everyone is drinking wine and the wine and as i said it, it takes a while for the action to start to kick in that's why at first everyone was pretty normal you know while rupan is just like you know trying to go from one like you know, from rebecca to fujiko from fujiko to rebecca you know like he, then he's like okay let me just you know like let me just go a little bit i'm going to bring you some wine he, he grabs like a flower goes to rebecca gives rebecca the flower and she was like and it was he was he was like ah this is for you and this would look good good on you and <laughs> then he's like should i bring you something don't worry leaves goes to fujiko grabs the <laughs> wine glass drinks it <laughs> and he's like <laughs> okay let me bring you some wine grabs the wine goes back to rebecca and my god the whole thing here now <clears throat> Here, both of them come very close, you know, like both Rebecca and Fuji have come very close to just meeting each other. And it was like just a few moments and Rupan tries his best to just cover. <laughs> and you know, she kind of hugged Rebecca at that moment, so Rebecca just slapped him. And then we get this guy, this, this guy, the, the guy, the main guy, the one who, like, you know, who's the, like the Guido, that's his name. <clears throat> this guy is here and he like gives him some like you know profound wisdom of like oh like you know what, what did he say uh you try to get two rabbits you get none something like that that proverb or whatever he says and uh, yeah now the auction starts like, you know uh rebecca is there fujiko is there and the the announcer like you know, he starts talking about what this uh you know like actually is um he talks about how whoever will drink the wine the the pig what, what was the name the love pig or something yeah whoever drinks that wine are going to like you know find happiness and he says how 10 years ago with the disappearance of the wife who was the producer of the wine the wine went bankrupt leaving only a handful of bottles still in existence making it worth even more than a 21 year old sort of okay so he's like this is what's happening this is some really rare wine you know 
the company went bankrupt that's why since it's so old you know it's going to fetch a huge price so this is once in a lifetime we're going to give out a barrel of that wine so the auction you know like kind of starts and Rupan goes to Fujiko and Rupan is like so, haha, so you're quite romantic aren't you I was like no like you know she's here for the money <laughs> Fujiko's like <laughs> yeah like you know I'm, I'm going to resell it for a big like you know like an amount so that's what I'm trying to do <laughs> and I was a little bit thinking about why Rebecca is here but it does make sense what she wants to do is just steal the wine so that you know it gives her that thrill now <laughs> here both Fujiko and Rebecca is just there and Rupan realizes that the the whole you know thing is over the act is over both knows that <laughs> and then Rupan sits down and starts introducing Fujiko to Rebecca and Rebecca to Fujiko <laughs> oh god that was that was funny uh, and Fujiko's like ah like you can you can have him I'm, I'm, I'm going to like you know go and grab the wine well Rebecca's like huh who who like you know like why should I care and she also leaves trying to get the wine both in opposite directions <laughs> okay now as always you know like um <clears throat> Fujiko starts to go and like you know kind of get the guard and you know seduces the guard gets the key card while Rebecca you know because she wants the thrill the adrenaline um she goes in and tries to like you know avoid the uh traps just jump jumping on like you know swinging on the chandeliers and everything so both in their own way do the job for a moment you know like uh, rebecca's flower almost fell and like you know alerted the security but she got the flower thankfully while um fujiko just used the security card to get in so here like kind of weird thing starts happening when rupan sees that like it's like this two like, of the couples just like you know <laughs> just making out and everything and everyone starts doing that and uh, at first rupan was like oh they're just you know like showing off but as we see later on when fujiko and rebecca goes in the wine starts working the the the, the effect starts hitting them and fujiko and rebecca both starts feeling the effect of the love potion and rupan is like wait what is going on why is everyone acting like this and uh, fujiko and rebecca come out and obviously rupan was the first people they saw that's why they just go to rupan and they're like <laughs> And just all on top of him <laughs> while guido uh, that guy he's trying to get the wine out of here <laughs> rebecca bought the whole mansion just so that she, she could <laughs> defeat fujiko and because she has the controls of the mansion she can shut off the doors and everything so when they start fawning over lupan guido comes out and he's like wait a minute why is the door locked and then he realizes what's happening and he tries to go out the window and <laughs> Rupan is like what are you doing why are you on like you know trying to you know like you should like you know you guys are like thief and like uh, like you know you, yeah what he says once a target is in sight a true thief would never let it go and he's like go and grab the treasure the person is running away and oh my god while both Fujiko and Ru uh, uh, Rebecca tries to go and grab the guy <laughs> those four gentlemen who were there they jump on top of rupan because obviously rupan is the first one they saw <laughs> after drinking the wine either way um rebecca tries to get uh, guido but you know like kind of jumps on top of the motorbike but he just shakes her off while fujiko just shoots the tire <laughs> now here I thought that the 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 the, the, the potion the, the the thing the wine's effect has gone out because they were acting a lot sober you know but I realized soon after that that no it's it's not the potion is still ongoing because no wait who knows like you know no no i think i think the, the effect was still there most probably yeah yeah the effect was still there 
I was going to say maybe the effect already wore off here, but nah, it's very unlikely that the effect wore off. Uh, because you know, like we, we don't see like you know the, the little blush that they on their had on their cheeks because they were drunk. That that potion was working. That I I was guessing that was the indicator that oh the potion was working. But here in this scene, th there's no blush in their like you know cheeks. So I was thinking maybe the potion wore off, but maybe not. You know, like I, I was going to say maybe they were just acting to just you know like acting as if the potion was still working to trick us audience and Rupan as well. But maybe not. Either way, you know um here like fujiko gives us a very interesting conversation section where fujiko first says you lose and uh okay so rebecca's like you're so clumsy what if you broke the barrel you worry about too much tribalities boring boring girl okay rebecca says say what you want rupan's all mine now I mean, he already was, we're married. Fujiko says that on paper, that's what a loser would say when he didn't choose you. You can't stand it, can you? Suddenly getting replaced. Have you, okay, here we go. Fujiko says, like, have you ever really loved someone? And uh, she talks about how to feel someone's love you know, to be in love is like to feel someone's love no matter how far apart you are to make your heart burn and shake and melt whenever you think about him. Have you ever felt that way about someone? And Rebecca's like, so that's how you feel about Rupan. And she's like, she just ignores that. She's like, so have you ever felt that way about anyone? Rebecca's like, you have to change your accessories with every new outfit, right? Who cares about all that heavy stuff? Because like I feel sorry for you. You've only ever known shallow trifling love. Okay, this was a very interesting conversation. I never thought Fujiko would say something like that. And um, like, like this is the thing. I feel like that the whole chemistry between Rupan and Fujiko is that they has this weird trust with again with like kind of for each other. Even though Fujiko keeps betraying Rupan multiple times, there is that weird way of trust and Rupan also never expect anything else from Fujiko. I remember that one episode where Rupan said something like, oh yeah, that, that, in that movie, you know, like when Fujiko became very, like, you know, like her memory kind of got erased, the Amnesia episode, where she started, became very polite and talked very politely to Rupan. Rupan was un behind, like, you know, like in a prison or something. He was just kept imprisoned. That episode, I remember Lupin saying something like, oh, this Fujiko is not fun at all. Something like that. And, uh, like, I feel like R R Fujiko being like Fujiko is the thing that actually attracts Lupin to Fujiko. Like, this is, like, this is like a very weird relationship dynamic, which is quite interesting. I've never seen any character like this before in any anime, you know? Like, Lupin and Fujiko's relationship is... So unique that it's, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's very difficult to understand what is going on through each other's mind and these small little glimpses of what Rupan and Fujiko thinks about their relationship is so interesting when it comes up for example this part of this episode where we actually get to see what Fujiko thinks about this whole situation and what is her point of view on like you know Rupan's feelings for her and her feelings for Rupan it's not so simple that it could be understood by normal by a normal way the relationship is weird and that is what is so unique about their relationship and since it is so weird in a way you could also say that it's one of the strongest you know like since as fujiko here says she just outright says that you are just married on paper that's nothing you know like that's nothing here. Now you've, you've only learned know this like you know the trifling like you know, you've just covered the surface of love, Rebecca. You know nothing about it. You know like love is only when nothing can stop you. No marriage paper, nothing. You know if you feel like that with someone like you know for someone, you know no small piece of paper can stop you or can be like the thing that can you know like restrict you. And that's probably what is Rupan and Fujiko's relationship in here 
where however far apart they are however time fujiko betrays rupan however time uh, rupan uses fujiko fujiko for his like you know like uh, can, uh what do you call it his own benefit this feeling would never change it's like something that's just locked in there or something so yeah like you know it's, it's so interesting so to these type of sections and uh, i think this is the first time i actually saw fujiko talking about love in this direct manner which was very interesting either way rupan comes in in the right time and he talks about how this guy is the actual man guido and um, oh you know what I, I i realize now probably because they were under the effect of the love potion fujiko actually talked about love like this directly in such a direct manner as i'm saying you know like she never talks like this because she was under the effect that's probably why either way um <clears throat> so yeah rupan talks about guido and how like you know he, he kind of breaks apart the whole section of what is happening and he says that um this guy you know like he he's the main guy that's why he already had the wine that's why he came in before and probably mixed the wine with everything like all the wine that was distributed to the um people here was mixed with that love potion and uh, since he's the main guy he has plenty of the wine so why did he come here obviously his target is not that one barrel you know it wouldn't make sense like you know he used the potion to get that barrel so like you know like why use something why try to steal something that you already have so that's why he says that his goal was something different and here's where things starts to get weird and kind of dark in a way so basically what happened as far as i could understand correct me if i'm wrong um the wife his wife mimi was a bio uh, like an engineer and she made this love potion which they used to mix in the wine to make other people like you know get that that temporary feeling you know and uh, they used to advertise this thing and say like oh if you drink this wine you'll forever be in love this and that and people when they drunk the wine they got that feeling you know they were able to realize that oh the advertising is true and they would tell other people this would do like a like a very good like you know advertisement be a very good um way to tell the people uh, and uh, probably like you know like that's how the wine made a huge amount of profit they were probably just got a lot out of it and like, everything was going well unless and until like, until the wife said that i am not going to do this anymore i'm not going to be making the wine the bluff potion anymore because i don't feel it's okay you know that's where everything went wrong and uh, since her wife his wife was the main person behind this wine you know behind the love potion if her wife if his wife decided not to do it it would defeat all the purpose you know so he probably tried to convince her he did not she did not agree to it now i don't know what happened probably they had a scuffle i'm not so sure if she, he deliberately killed her or if that was like an accident and she somehow died you know either way his wife probably died and that's what rupan is insinuating here saying that oh the wife went missing missing you know and uh, after killing her wife or after in an accident her wife died he obviously got very scared and just tried to like you know like somehow get like kind of do something to the body that's why he put the body in the wine barrel and, and put wine in it to hide the body and that's why people would say like you know he has this barrel in his cellar but he never uses it he never drinks it because his wife's body is in there that's why he never used it then i don't know how he lost custody of the the place and the the, the wine the cellar the winery or whatever what happened but somehow he lost that and like the auction people got their hand on it and now he's back again because he knows if that barrel is sold when people will open that barrel the wife's body will come out that's why he's here to get the barrel out of here this is how i think everything went i might be completely off the mark completely wrong so if i'm incorrect let me know but this is how i think it went either way um so yeah that's what happens uh rebecca after realizing what ha has happened she just, she just crushes the 
battle and a person comes out of it we see that and they did not show much about it probably because of censorship and everything and otherwise uh, things will go to get a bit too dark you know so he like you know like the, the whole part was probably omitted they kind of showed us the silhouette of the person in the wine barrel and they just completely did not show anything after that now interesting thing another question that was coming into my mind so why did rupa not get effect of the wine i thought he did not drink the wine but rebecca says even a better like you know reason which i wholeheartedly agree with and i think that's probably what happened rebecca is correct why did the <laughs> why not affect him because rupan is in love with everyone all the all the ladies in the world so <laughs> that's why it didn't even work because it's basically a thing that he already has in him you know <laughs> love potion would do nothing to it he already loves everyone so what else could have even be there you know he's like at level 10 so what can like a level 5 thing do to it <laughs> something like that which is a hilarious explanation and i wholeheartedly think that that's the truth <laughs> that's why the potion didn't work on rupan <laughs> oh god okay either way um obviously rebecca and fujiko are just then again starts like just clinging to him and <laughs> Rupan is like just tries to like you know, jump on the <laughs> and the effect goes away Rebecca and Fujiko just kicks him <laughs> now <laughs> Rupan is like it's hard to maintain a woman's pride <laughs> god damn either way then we get the death scene again with that girl I don't know if that's Rebecca. That might be Rebecca, but I'm not sure. But again, with that that like that that person who's probably the dad, and he she remembers Fujiko's words. You've ever known shallow traveling uh, traveling love, and Rebecca's like, what is it? The dream of Ital Italy. And again, the dream of Italy comes into like you know like that thing comes up. We don't know what it is still, but I'm sure we'll get to know. Anyways, that was fantastic. Both these episodes were really good. <laughs> and yes, this was kind of a very hilarious episode. This episode it was kind of interesting to see. So yeah, either way, that's it. Thanks for watching. This was my reaction to Rupan the Third, Part 4, Episode number 9 and 10. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe. If you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed, and comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know. And I'll check them out. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next week with two more episodes of Rupan the Third. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.